And now that we've seen how applicants apply to specific jobs, let's say that hundreds of people have applied for your requisition. What we're going to do over here is click on candidates and click on candidates. And you'll see all the people that have applied for all the jobs in the entire company. Now, if you go to my candidates, you'll actually see just the people that have applied to your particular jobs. Now, what you could do is if you go back to candidates and new candidate, uh, let's say a person didn't apply formally through your website and you wanted to add them in manually, you can do that. Just fill in all of their information, including attaching documents, uh, and click Save, and they will actually become a candidate. You can also import candidates from, let's say, another system, an older system, an old database that you had, uh, or quite often an agency would send you a list of names with their credentials. You can import them in as well. Now, if you go to Candidates and Search, you'll actually be able to take a look at every single candidate or applicant in the system and search for specific skill sets or characteristics. So for example, you can um, search by certain keywords. For example, if you're looking for French and Danish together or Excel or certain licenses, what have you. But there are a lot of different search fields here you want to play around with to see uh, which candidates fit. Now, as you shortlist your search, you can always reject the candidates uh, to move to a shorter list that you can deal with from an interview point of view or background point of view. So let's go back to candidates and a couple of small things. So uh, let's say these are your candidates and you wanted to send them all a specific email. You can choose just one person or choose them all by clicking this. Click send email and you could send a personal email. You could also go and view individual resumes, print them. And here's an interesting thing. So let's say Jack Stone did not apply for pharmacy technician. Katie Winston did. So if you wanted to make Jack Stone a candidate for that job, you check, and you can check more than one person. Click Submit and select the job that you want to, them to apply for, and click Submit again, and they will actually become an automatic candidate for that job. So quite often, people apply for things. You see their skill set suitable for other jobs that are pending, and you can apply their resume to that other requisition. So let's have a look. Let's go to Katie Winston and you'll see all of the information about her down here from the resume. You could view the resume in PDF format or you can just view it right within Talio by clicking on this magnifying glass and have a look at it. Now you don't want to just use this. You actually want to use a search capability of Talio. So for example with all the skills in here you could go in and search um, for specific things from specific people. So now let's move this person forward in the selection process. Right now we're looking at the resume. We think it's okay. Uh, and if you scroll down a bit, you can now, you can actually edit and add additional things to the person's resume. You can send it to uh, other people within your company. But look at this. There's a bunch of things that we can do uh, for the candidate to move them through the selection process. For example, if you have, uh, if you wanted to send an email or you telephone them and responses, you can click on these and the record of all these conversations or these contacts will be down here. There's tasks that you can add. For example, next time I have to uh, get their documentation for work visa or make sure they have a certain certificate or have to call a university, you can do that. Events and comments, anything that goes on at all, you want to document it, you just click on new comment and you can add those. But I'm going to go down to interviews, right? So let's say we want to schedule an interview. I click and I'm going to select the type. Let's say first we're doing a phone screen. We're going to do a phone screen for the employee on the 15th of June. And there wouldn't be an interview room. So if it was interview one, two, three, you might want to also then specify the room to show up in. Uh, and the status is it's scheduled. And of course, it's that time zone. So we're going to add some interviewers. Who's going to be involved in this interview? If it's just you, no problem. But there might be additional people. So I'll add this guy and recruiter 193. Now, we're going to set the time. So right now it's set up that uh, Ruzbe Vatanchi will interview at 8 o'clock and recruiter 193 will uh, interview at 845. So you could change these to be exactly the same. Uh, and you get the error message, that's okay. And they will end at the same time. So it'll be concurrent, maybe a teleconference or something. So down here, do you want your interviewers to receive documents in advance? Yeah, I want them to see the resume and the certificate of achievement. 
uh, and down here I can put any comments relevant to this particular interview. So for example, if the candidate is using an assistive device like a hearing device and there might be issues or we want to do only a Skype call, and put the comments in there, okay? Now we do want to send an email to the interviewers, carbon copy you for record, and send it to the candidate as well. And that's a perfect thing to do because uh, it's an automatic reminder of the ex exact time and maybe any instructions that you might have for that person. So I'm going to click Save, and it has been scheduled, okay? So um, normally what would happen down here under Next Steps, uh, I've already hired the person, so let's ignore that, but under Next Steps you would see a uh, uh, phone interview and then the interview and then the hiring and so on and uh, throughout the steps you would continue and say okay so I'm I'm ready to move on to the next step you click you approve it and you're good to go so down here uh, I've already done these for you uh, on these various dates right so keep an eye on that it might show up but I'm gonna manage it down here in a different way so if you scroll down let's say we've done the first interview uh, and we have some feedback that came out of these interviews. I would click feedback, type in uh, the notes that I have. I would do a new reference check, do some background checks, and then when you finished all of those, uh, you're ready to make an offer. So I'm going to then click new offer, and it will be pharmacy technician. We're going to use the offer letter template, and the title will be job offer and it'll be uh, I'll put myself as the manager and of course there has to be an approval process so I would get an email asking me to approve this offer it's a full-time job pay rate is gonna be forty seven dollars per hour no stock options and let's set an expiry date so if the person doesn't get back to you by the 22nd uh, then it will expire and the employee will actually start on the 29th of June now, we're going to set this as a review in eSign. So the way the, the applicant or the candidate would accept the job offer is type in their name, select a date, and that will be their signature. But sometimes you might want them to actually review and print the document, sign it, and send it uh, to you. Or in some cases, you ask the employee to come directly to you, so do not email the offer. So I'm going to choose the first option because we do want to automate all of this, right? Let's have a look. Let's save. And there we go. The offer will be sent. It's pending approval by the manager. So all the manager has to do is click on the email, accept, and we're good to go. Okay. Now, if there's any expenses arising from this particular recruit, you click new expense. And let's say I spent $120 on a meal. Uh, and it was for this requisition. I spent it on this date and any description you might have. So that'll keep track of all the expenses related to this particular hire. Uh, and that, again, becomes really important in terms of recruitment metrics because you do want to weigh the costs of recruiting from, let's say, different locations, different parts of the country, different sources uh, versus the actual quality of the person that you hired. Okay, so um, I think we're ready to actually hire the person. And what will happen is right up here you will see the word hire and when you click on it you click OK and the person will then actually become an employee you'll actually get a little message that says uh, do you want to make this person an employee so the person now is an employee and if you actually go to employees you'll be able to see the person by searching for them and just one last thing I want to take care of so if I go back to candidate I'm going to click next to Katie Winson I'm gonna change the status to hired okay and put in uh, notes here and you'll see that screen right there so also create employee records from candidate data yep let's do that she's now going to become an employee proceed and okay there we go now remember the other option was to go into her record and over here under next steps you can manage um, the successive steps as well and the last one would be higher okay and don't forget you can always remove the candidate from uh, the roster as well so let's go to employees and I'm going to search for Winston and let's have a look there's Katie Winston okay she is still pending because uh, the manager has not totally approved it yet but the status will change to approved now one last thing uh, don't forget at any step you wanna put in comments any extraordinary things that happen you wanna type in as many comments as possible because that will be on record All right but we do want to now start the onboarding procedure. The onboarding would, uh, let's say the employee's hired and prior to the first day of the job, they have to fill out some documents, maybe do a, 
uh, onboarding sort of training session, maybe read some notes, watch some videos, you can always set those up. But I have one that I want to show you. So we're going to do a new packet called onboarding, and there's also an offboarding package as well. So we'll do onboarding, new packet, and the title will be called onboard pharmacy. So different jobs have different types of packets, and it is for Katie Winston, and you could do more than one, I suppose. Uh, she's being hired on this date, and I will just say the 22nd, and the start date is the 29th. Now we're going to set this as active, and the owner of this particular packet is me. You can put more than one person if you like. Click Next. Now what is it that we'd like to do? Uh, we're going to add an activity. It's the TD1 payroll form that they have to fill out and the due date for this will be let's say the 29th which means the employee will get the the form via email they have to fill it out have it ready and bring it on their first day of the job uh, in addition to this you might have benefits forms that need to be filled out maybe there's some security forms that need to be filled out or we can actually even add uh, something like read uh, page 1 to 10 of a manual that we could email to them directly so let's save this and the person will be notified automatically okay uh, and the progress is 0% because we haven't actually done anything with it. But if I go here, I can edit it, I could delete it, and I can actually view that packet as well. Okay? So, oh, and you could also send a reminder. So everything is good to go. The employee is there. Once onboarding is done, you now got an employee. Imagine you're doing a lot of recruits. A system like this makes life a lot easier for you. The administrative burden is lessened. You can spend a lot more time scrutinizing and looking at the candidates from a personal human point of view. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, you followed process, the exact same process for every single candidate, including lots and lots of notes that you're keeping so that you don't get into any sort of trouble uh, later in the future. So systems like Teleo Business Edition or other ATS applicant tracking systems really go a long way uh, in terms of helping you manage your people. Now I'm going to go back to employees and notice you can also just add a new employee. You can look at org charts, you can search for employees and, and so on, right? Uh, I'll just have a look at org chart quickly. Uh, and it tells you, this is based on employees I put in, that for each different person uh, who's reporting into them and you can click these buttons here so for example this position director of HR is vacant you can see that there's nine people reporting into it and if you click it gives you that uh, particular org structure and if you click on any vacant position it goes and shows you that actual uh, requisition as well so go back to employees and let's search for Winston there we go now I have to tell you this is not an HRIS so normally what would happen is this data once you hire the employee would go into an actual HRIS but in the meantime you could play around with little things like uh, setting goals and reviews maybe a three month or six month probationary sort of set of goals uh, for the employee uh, and there's always a history log kept for everything that you've done with the person. Okay. Now let's look at a couple of extra things that might be of value for you. If you click on onboard, offboard, and then onboarding, you'll see a list of activities that uh, specific employees have to complete to finish off their onboarding process. And if you go back to onboard, offboard, and click activity library, you'll be able to see all the activities that exist. So I just added a new one. It's called navigate site, and then we want the employees as a task to go through at least three days before the first day of work to just become familiar with the location itself. Now I'm going to add a new activity template and you're going to give it a title for example visit nearby store and description is do a competitive visit. So we want an employee to maybe go to a nearby store and just have a look at what how they do things and uh, become familiar with what the competition's like. So you want to select an activity type. For example, uh, you need the employee to contact, let's say, the manager, uh, fill out some forms, uh, bring them to work on the first day, or it could be an employee task like uh, we just did, visit a nearby store or, or um, you know, do a drive-by, that sort of thing. Then if you scroll down and click Next, you'll be able to actually specify whether there's a number of days that the employee has to complete it. So for example, if one of the tasks for the employee was to go and do a uh, French test, okay, uh, at a nearby agency, how many days do they have? 
or you can set the due date like we did when you set the activity in the onboarding process. Now dependencies means that is this activity dependent on, on another one. So if you needed a person to fill out a waiver, for example, as a form activity, and then once that's done, then they can do the next activity. You click that, choose the dependency, right? Uh, and it'll be like a prerequisite, okay? So employee facing title, we could do a competitive visit. In here, type any text that the employee might need to know, instructions, etc. So I'm just going to type instructions. And then down here, you can add additional instructions and even images. So in the navigation activity, I added a map of the site for the employee. Go down here, click save, and it'll show up actually as an activity. I'm just going to cancel. And you'll be able to choose that activity uh, when you create an onboard uh, packet. Now, if you wanted to bundle a few activities, uh, for example, all employees in pharmacy have to do both of these, you can create a new bundle, attach both of these, so you don't have to keep choosing individual ones, okay? So that could come in really handy in managing the onboarding process. Just imagine, employees automatically get documents or orientation videos or manuals before they arrive at work. And of course, a newer thing is uh, they, can, they might have to go do some sort of virtual reality simulation to become familiar with the work site and the people uh, before they show up to their first day of work. Now one last thing I want to show you is reports. So if you click reports and then run report, there's uh, a bunch of them. There, you know, Some of them are really good, some of them are not so, but there are pretty much recruitment and selection metrics you might find in your textbook. There's some related to candidate, the really good ones are under requisition, and the compliance ones, these are more American in nature, so just don't worry about those. But if you go to requisition, for example, you want to do a cost per hire, you want to do a, a cost per hire by current owner, that'll be by recruiter, and so on, so on. So try these. Let's say I want to do cost per hire. I click Run. And there's some things that you can choose, uh, you know, uh, the fill dates or from, let's say you only wanted to do the last six months, type those in uh, by specific departments and so on. But when you click run report, it might take a few seconds, uh, but you'll actually get that report for the parameters that you specified. So play around with some of the reports. And in more advanced teleo and with the right configuration specialists, uh, if you have them on staff or as a consultant, They'll be able to customize certain reports and actually uh, pretty much anything that you saw here, including lists, uh, configuration people would be able to customize it for you. So in a sort of very uh, uh, general sense, that's what Taleo does. There's a, a lot more features to this. There's a lot of configuration that could be done in the background. But this is what some specialists would help you in an organization. The idea of these tutorials is to give you a view so that you can play around with it for a little while. I think your accounts will be active for about a month. Uh, and just you can go uh, put it on your resume to some extent and then tell employers that, yeah, you know, you're familiar with the Telio environment, so you're not caught off guard. So play around with this, have some fun, and uh, add a really valuable skill to your resume.